seasons ever okay and it all starts with the parents if it isn't for parents and your cooperation none of this happens for us you understand it's it's very important that you guys are involved with what the coaches do and it's not easy being all the people we are all the personalities we are everybody has their own ways of doing things and thinking but coming together and kind of going along with my program and the coaches program and the reason it happened is because of you guys and I want to thank you parents very much for your time and commitment not only to myself and the coaching staff but the Lion Bears program okay yeah. it's one of the it's one of the strongest programs still programs still around and running strong and I, and I mean it you're watching programs that I've been coaching over 20 years that are falling apart. And, and Blind Bears is strong as it was back when I started with my sons, okay, back in 1999. Alright? Just so you know, it's the same basic board as it was in 99. And then when I left, after six years, willingly, um, no, I was dismissed because of uh, complications with the president, and we reunited three years ago. He asked me to come back, and I'm proud to be back, and my journey started in 2015 again with the Lion Bears, and here we are this year, three years later, and I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the boys, especially because the boys are the ones that you guys don't know what goes on every day at practice, okay? <laughs> and you probably don't want to know sometimes, okay? But because of their, their belief, their commitment to us, if they didn't believe in what we were doing and what we were putting out on that field and teaching them each week, we wouldn't have been where we were this year. Let's, let's be plain and simple. If the players don't like the coaches, they're not going to do what we want them to do. It's, it's as simple as that. I want to thank my coaching staff for their time and commitment and everything they've done for these boys. Because honestly, you know, I'm the face of the team. But the guys that put in the tireless work, that don't get all the credit, don't get it, that deserve it more than myself are the assistant coaches. Okay? And they did a great job, and I'm very proud to have them on my team. Now, to the good things. I want to call up Justin Bannister. Alright, I just want everybody to know something. Those of you who don't know, Justin, Justin was not able to make the trip with us um, for a technicality in the rules, okay? And just so everybody knows, because you look at Justin and everybody doesn't understand something, Justin's 10 years old playing with 12 and 13 year olds. I don't know if you guys know that or not, even the players. Justin's 10 years old and because of his weight, he has to play up with us. Hey, which I'm happy of, because I love Justin. Okay, let's, let's make that plan simple. Okay? And Justin's been with me for the last two years. Last year was a rough year for you, the first year with me, wasn't it, Justin? But you know what? As the year went on, Justin got much better and better and better. And Justin came back this year. 
I was worried until I saw his mom at the Walmart in Darien. And she's like, hey, coach, what the heck are you doing in Darien? Well, my wife takes me all over the place. So it's Aaron Day, I'm running. So, so I talked to the mom. And she was like, well, coach, we're not sure if we're going to be coming back, you know, the trip, the travel, and their older son possibly not having a team to play for. And it was, it was disappointing, okay? And then registration comes, and here comes the banisters to the door. And I couldn't have been happier. And unfortunately, you didn't get to go with us down to Florida, but we have a gift for you. Everybody got in Florida, and you're going to get the same gift. All right. Because you were part of this team. You put in all your hard work and time. And he's a man of many words. <laughs> Victim. <laughs> this 
Mr. Jordan Diorio. First year coaching Jordan. This is not his first year in the program, but it's my first year. I wish I could have had had him for a lot more years. Um, talking to Jordan throughout the season, um, been an eight-play player his whole career in line Bears, except for this year, his championship year. And one of the big reasons why we're champions, not only in Chicagoland and national championships, is because of Jordan. Like I tell all of you, playing time doesn't always mean anything. When you do get that opportunity of getting your playing time, it's what you do with it when you get it. And you take advantage of it and you do it, and it doesn't matter. Like I've said a thousand times, I've had players be eight play players their whole career through the football with me, and then go on to be starters and All-Americans in high school, go on to play college football. It does not matter. If you're playing the game of football, and you're out of every practice and every game putting it in, you're going to get somewhere in life, and you'll get somewhere being a football player. This guy right here, another man of a lot of words. I mean, I'm not keeping it quiet all year. I just thought it was unbelievable would never utter a smile. I would try to make this kid laugh at every practice, every game. It wasn't until we won the Chicagoland Championship that he actually put a smile on his face. And you, you know what? And I understand it, because his, his mindset, what football was, I show up to the field, business, after, is when we smile and then we beat the coach up in the parking lot. <laughs> you know, I gave him a hard time, you know, messing with him all the time, but one of the big reasons we are what we are and a part of this team, and I'm glad he's a part of this team, we were able to coach him at least one time, Jordan DiOrio. Play both sides of the ball. Our boys are raised right. I'm getting everybody. Very shy, very yeah, humble. Yeah, I got to. Keep to themselves. I'm going to put this on YouTube. Yes, I do. I like it. We have gentlemen on this team. Which team is that? Yeah, I do. He's on My next guy, Mr. Eddie Ramos. Yeah, Eddie Ramos. Okay. I had the pleasure of getting to coach Eddie one year. Eddie's been in the program since how long? Six years. Okay. Another young man I spoke to and asked him, what did you play? How much did you play? Because honestly, I didn't know. And Eddie said, I didn't play much, coach. And I said, well, let's see what you got. And you know what? Very shy, humble young man. And he's like, well, I hope I play. But I'm fine with how I play. And you know what? Eddie played way beyond how he spoke about himself. And Eddie was a dominating lineman on offense and defense. And he's very proud to have him on this team. He grew a lot, not only when he first came to registration, he like grew like five inches until <laughs> the end of the season. But Eddie did a great job. I was very proud to have him on our team. And another huge reason why we're national champs and Chicagoland champs. And another guy, a school guy, good guy, Eddie Ramos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay. I got you. My next. Mm -hmm. I sure am. Dylan Robertson. Oh, yeah. Okay, 
for those of you who don't know, his name really is not Robertson. It's Thompson. When he came to play with us last year, I don't know why I got Robertson in my head, but I kept his dad, him, his family, they just went right with it, with the Robertsons. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, who coached us last year, actually had to tell me their name was Thompson. I don't know where Robertson, I even had it in my phone and on the Rousey phone. <laughs> okay. So they just went with it. They didn't care. Right, good. Well, last year was his first year with us, and he came from Elmwood Park. And it's obvious when you get somebody from another program, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan played with us, and last year, as the year went on, he got better and better. And just so you guys know, another, he's a peewee that played with us. And it wasn't for weight, and it wasn't for age. His dad said he will not play football unless he's playing football for our coaching staff. And I'm happy that he played for us. I think he did himself a disservice in my heart, not that I wouldn't want him on our team. He knows that, but he's playing with bigger kids, outweighed, outsized by a lot. But Dylan showed up, and every year he's gotten better and better and better. I don't think he was as happy this year as he was last year. I don't know why, but the Robertson family, great family, great young man. <laughs> <laughs> next year, his, he again just put that out there that if I'm not there, he's not playing. So a lot of pressure on me. But Dylan Thompson. Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> you see this big luck every night. <laughs> Jenkins. The only shy one, non shy one on the team. All right, just a little background on, on Mr. Jenkins. Unfortunately for him, when he was really young, he lived next door to me. And, he had a, and his mom would. Leave, leave him and his sister with me and my, my wife and we'd have to babysit him. And all my wife did was feed him ice cream. It didn't do him any good. He's still small. Okay. And then he moved away. And then he shows up to a registration. And he was obviously known as my son then, according to everybody. But his first year was uh, two years ago when he came here to play. His first year... Rough year, huh? Rough first year for him, no doubt. Last year, better. This year, much better. Okay? He came a long way. I'm proud of him. He's got a future. We need to work on our grades. Because you can't play high school football if we don't keep those grades up. Don't worry, you're not to me all the time. So. Okay? So... And my cousin is a gym teacher at a school, so he's got a tough <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah Jenkins is another reason why we're national champs, because you know what? He could easily quit and call it a, call it a life in football, because we were rough on you for a while, weren't we? For your own good. Okay, but I'm glad he was here. I'm glad he finished with us. His eighth grader going on to high school, and I wish him nothing but the best. And his mom will continue to call me and tell me to come beat him up in his house if I need to. But Isaiah Jenkins, my son. I can't believe he's shy. This guy doesn't show up. <laughs> All right, Mr. Nieves, Ricardo. You're gonna love this story about Ricky. He's gonna be real happy. I tell him. Okay, Ricky came to us two years ago. Never played a down of football ever. Mom calls me up. Hi. I'm Ricky Nieves' mom. Maria. 
I'm scared. Is he going to get hurt? <laughs> well, not the kind of conversation I want to try to have with a mom playing football for the first time. So I reassured her that everything would be okay, he'd be in good hands, and continually until she finished signing him up and was sure he was going to play, she would give me a phone call or an email or eat. And wonderful woman, wonderful. And I'm glad he stuck it out. And again this year, she came in for registration and she said, Coach, look at the size of the boys he's going to have. Is he going to be okay? Maria, he's going to be fine. And let me tell you, it's not about sometimes having all the skill, everything you need to be, everybody looks more than a football player. It takes something that he has, heart. And let me tell you what, this little guy, you look at him, little guy, who's grown a lot since the season, too. He's tough as nails, man. This kid is tough as nails. He wasn't afraid to go up against anybody. If any of you saw the championship video, when number 46, Ben Salo, that monster, dirty player, went after Ricky. And Ricky went right back at him. And then when Ricky came off to the sideline, Coach Tersh grabbed Ricky and had a conversation. And Ricky said, I'm not backing down from him. That's right. I'm not backing down from him. I'm glad. I'm glad because he threw a chief shot on the very first play of the game on Melvin Otto that didn't get called. And who ended up knocking himself out of the game because of his nonsense? 46, right? Fiorio, he was with you trying to, trying to get goad you into a fight and he ended up hurting himself and taking himself out of the game. And it started with Ricky. And you want to know the term of a true teammate? Ricky would come and always ask about his players, how everybody's doing, how I'm doing. He'd show up to practice yelling at his mom. If he was not there at 530, she was calling me. Coach, we're going to be 30 seconds late. <laughs> because he was worried. And you know what? I got him into wrestling this year, because I know wrestling is something he's going to be very good at. But I also know one thing. In high school, kids like his size and the wrestlers always end up being nose tackles and being all state nose tackles in football. And I hope he continues with football and wrestling. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gotta be careful what I say, as you can see, he's those with those. All right, Jermaine Young, his cousin, Amaje, and Armari. Now, Jermaine, this is Jermaine's first year with us. Jermaine played in Shabona Park. Boo! We saw Jermaine two years ago when he was playing in Shabona. And went to Terrell and said, we got to figure out how we're going to get Jermaine here. Okay? It's not, it's not the size. Here's your prototypical football player. Okay? Something I didn't know. He was born. He doesn't have a, a bone in part of his shoulder. Okay? Which makes it tough for him to play play football, which I didn't find out until a couple weeks in the season. I'm screaming and yelling at the kid. Look out, me, you're not doing this! <laughs> that, that wasn't say, <laughs> Dad let me know, and then things start to, to compute. Now, Jermaine played quarterback last year for Shabona. His team didn't do that well, which is okay. And when the opportunity came for him to come here, this is where we were going to change him and, and make him better, and we did, and I'm proud he came here. I wish I had a few more years with him, obviously, because what he, what he is now to what he would have been from two years of us would have been fantastic. 
a huge, this is, this is your quarterback, unflappable. Let's remember the Windy City game, 44 seconds left in the game. Maldonado gets behind, and who puts the ball right in the bucket? And we have a chance, we have a chance to, to beat Windy City, okay? Probably the best game I've been involved in in a lot of years. And to lose on a 30-yard field goal was devastating, but we still gave ourselves a chance to win. And all year he kicked extra points for us. On off, it was, you know, he was good consistency, but that was a lot to do with not working a lot in practice with it. We didn't do it a ton. But then we had three weeks to gear up before nationals. And boy, did this boy do some booting for us, huh? Honestly, I mean, he's going to be, not only is he going to be a great quarterback, he's going to be great safety corner, but he's going to be a very good kicker, too. And uh, it's going to be awesome. And I'm proud to have him. He's been his dad coach along with us. Glad he came along with us. Glad he came along for the ride. Another huge reason why we were national champs. Jermaine Young. Zero confidence in himself because uh, we put him at running back. Like, Coach, you don't bring, I don't know what you're doing at running. Don't put me at running back. Get that running back. Probably the only guy I've ever put at running back in his first two times he touched the football, he scores a touchdown. Yeah. Okay. And, and you know what? And it was special to him, too. Because, you know, there's certain guys that never ever begin on the line. I try my hardest to get those guys to touch the football when I can. You know, he touched the football. But in high school, he's not going to be a lineman, okay? He's going to be a linebacker. He's going to be a tight end, receiver, running back. There's no question about it. He's got the skill level to do it. I wish I had him a couple years before that because things would probably be different for him position-wise. And we might have won two more. We probably would have won in 2015. And we probably would have won in 2016. And then this year, we probably would have had three if we had him with us because... Uh, Believe it or not, with his lack of confidence, he is a hell of a football player. An eighth grader that's going to have a great career in high school. And I'm glad his parents entrusted us with him. They looked at me cross-eyed a few times, I know. But uh, I'm glad he's on a team. Another reason we're here doing what we're doing, celebrating. Jacob, thank you, Daddy. Good day. I've never seen him red. That's the first time he's been red. Lost for words, I'm surprised. Uh, somebody who's not at a loss for words, Solomon. <laughs> Hey, this was my writing partner home every night. His, his, his parents, I did it for a reason, I'm sure, because 
Sure. He talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think they needed a break. <laughs> but, I mean, honestly, you want to talk about football? This guy talks football 24-7. Wakes up eating it, goes to bed, sleeping it, and everything in between, okay? He's grown a ton since Florida, just so you know. He is huge. Solomon came here with a, with a very, no confidence, a very no self-esteem whatsoever. He walked down the field and said, hey, coach, I'm going to be your starting defensive end, and I'm going to be one of the best players I've ever Not kidding. And I said to him, okay, well, we'll see what you got, because you're going from Shavona, so. <laughs> I did. I gave him a hard time. Hey, hey. And I get along very well with Shabona. It's just that we have a nice rivalry between us, okay? It's, it's a good rivalry. <laughs> Solomon did not disappoint, okay? He put his money where his mouth is. And Solomon, uh, during the, the middle of the season, we had a couple injury problems. We were short on linemen. And Solomon volunteered to play line, okay? He was a tight end. Probably where he should be, where he's going to be. He said, hey, coach, if you need me, I will play line. I'll do whatever it takes for this team. I'll do it. And Brandon Pounders, who unfortunately had to leave early, also, they came to me and pulled me aside and asked me if they could go to the line to fill that void. Because Brandon was a fullback and asked if they could come fill that void for those injuries. Now, that's that's... Team, those are team players there, and what he wanted. And his whole thing to me was the whole time, we're here for a national championship. And he did what he had to do for the team. I'm proud that he got to coach him. I wish I could have had this guy as well, as well as any, all you guys from the beginning. Um, he, he did not do anything but off, because nobody could block him. The only person that beat out Solomon on the football field, because the only time I ever screamed and yelled at him. It was because you know what? When you're when you're as good as he is and at the position we had him at, he took he took chances. Sometimes it didn't pay off. And then he'd get his rear end shoot out and he'd look at me and be like, I can't believe you're yelling. <laughs> well, everybody gets yelled at. I discriminate equally to everybody. Okay. So I mean honestly, I mean if you want to talk like a face of the guy that does all the talking and all that, then it's solid. And you know, you got to have a guy like that. That's your rah rah guy. That's your guy out there, okay? And I'm glad to have had him, and I'm glad to have had his parents let me take him home because I've never talked more fantasy football in my life. Okay? And him and I, just so you know, have this big rivalry. He's an Aaron Rodgers guy, I'm a Tom Brady guy, and oh, he's yeah. in the championship. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, big like <laughs> 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 Mr. Sanchez. Stayed with it, and stayed committed to it. Julius started out where everybody usually does their first year of football. Where did you start out? Playing line, okay? And progressed from there to where we know he should be: the receiver, tight end, running back, possibly quarterback. But the quarterback thing didn't work out because obviously, as a very good athlete, Julius uh, also is a very good baseball player. So that kind of interfered with everything. And some plans we had. But it doesn't matter. Wherever he decides he's going to play football, baseball, Julius is going to be good at it. 
play both sides of the ball for us. Fantastic kid who I forced to play basketball for my cousin at Lincoln Middle School. <laughs> and got to go watch, got, unfortunately how it worked out, not unfortunately, fortunately how it worked out, I had to do security for the game. And I actually got to watch Julius play in the playoffs. And uh, not being a basketball player before, he really looked good. And like I said, you know, if you're, he's a good athlete. I'm glad that his dad let us coach him. He did a great job. Another huge reason why we're national champs, Chicago Land champ. And wish him nothing but the best as an eighth grader going to Leiden. And his family, along with all the families, fantastic. Julia Sanchez. Yeah. Mr. Darrell Taylor. Okay. Got, got the pleasure of coaching Darrell, Darrell my first year here, 2015. Really, really good football player. Okay? Last year, he progressed and got better and better. And then this year, he decided he didn't want to play. And it's funny, you're going, oh, if he didn't want to play, why is he here? Well, it's funny you say that. Because I was upset that he wasn't playing. Because Mr. Taylor's going to be a football player. I don't think baseball is in his future, in my opinion. He's a football player. He's, 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 he's good. He's very good at what he does. And just so you know, he should have been a Pee Wee. And the only reason he played is if he could play for us. He actually wasn't playing because he didn't want to play Pee Wee because we weren't coaching Pee Wee. But had he come ask me, unlike we started the first week and then he did ask me, and I said, absolutely, Darrell, you can come play for me anytime. And I told him to go home, and I told his mom and dad, get the butts out here, and let's get him back out there on the football field, where he belongs. And Darrell did a great job. A little overwhelming, okay? Obviously, a peewee playing junior midget football, it's a little different game. A little overwhelming this year for him at times, but the future's really bright with him. Another reason why we are who we are. I'm glad to have him here. I'm glad his mom and dad have him here. And I expect him back here next year. Okay. Patty, you're good, yeah. Well, Taylor, you're good. Well, with us and his dad followed it up okay he came from Elmwood Park with uh, Mr. Robertson and <laughs> very very fortunate to have him and then this year we took him and continued to move forward and hey everybody has their part on the team he has his part on the team but when you look to for that big play, that that look in your eye and pressure situations, this is the guy we turn to. Make, make no mistake. Okay? He's gonna be a high school player next year. I can't wait to see what his future holds. Because it's 
sky's the limit if he wants it. And he knows it. And then also baseball, the sky's the limit for him as well. But I think he's a football player. And uh, I can't say that. It's fantastic. Huge reason why we're here. Huge reason why we're here. Last year played linebacker for us. This year played safety, probably where he's going to be in high school, corner safety, receiver, running back, quarterback, wherever he is, he's, they'll be there and they'll do it great, just like he does. Marco Maldonado. special. It's too bad because uh, of an organization I came from, for young men that, that go through a program like that, we have also an honorary award for being that committed to the program and staying in the program from day one till the end. And I wish the Light Bears would honor guys that started all the way up together. And uh, each and every one of them has their own story. Each and every one of them, I can tell you, uh, when I took this team over in 2015, I think they won the most two games in the season. Oh, Maybe? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One. I said they one. So, our journey, our first year, was the parents thought we were psychopath coaching staff when we first mm -hmm. came in here. <laughs> and as the season went on, they, they understood what we were doing and what we were trying to accomplish. The first year, we were five and four, squeaked into the playoffs. But honestly, we didn't squeak into the playoffs. We lost our first four out of five games. Then Coach Trell, Coach Javi, Coach Renee, and then Coach Frankie was with us, uh, grabbed me after we lost. We were beating the living crap out of Addison on homecoming. They couldn't do anything, and we ended up losing the game in the fourth quarter on two touchdowns. And we ended up losing by a point. And after that game, the coaches grabbed me, and we went behind my truck, and we beat each other up for a couple hours. And then they, later that night, I got a bunch of texts and calls saying, Coach, you're not doing what you do. Do what you do. So that weekend, I called a bunch of parents, get out to the football field, we reconfigured our whole offense, our whole defense. We changed everything up, and we went back. We went to the way I did it, and we ended up running the table. And we ended up going to nationals and getting into the national championship game in 2015, where we lost to Pinellas Thunderbirds. Took a beating, and it turns out that they were a Pee Wee team. 
<coughs> and we were, and just and we were a half junior peewee, half cadet team, because there's another yeah. half of kids that are down at peewee this year that were with this group when we went to nationals. But this group here is special because they started here together at Bandit, and now they're finishing out here together. And first guy I want to talk about, come on over here. I know you can't see him. <laughs> see, but that's okay. You can laugh, you can do whatever. Okay? Guys like Beaver, the Rickies, the Taylors, you know, the guys that, that aren't the gifted guys, the guys that come to practice, and as their parents tell them, like every parent does, you go there to do the best you can and it will pay off. Which is why I coach still, okay? A lot of you have been around the daddy ball where the daddy puts the kid at quarterback, the daddy puts the kid at the running back and he shouldn't be the running back. I don't care if, he could, if he's supposed to be there, I don't care. But the reason I, I do it are for the guys like Beaver, okay? Because there's coaches out there that, well, you better be this big you better be this fast, you better be this skilled, you better be this. And you know what? No, this, I'm not disrespecting Carlo, he's, not, he's none of that. He's not the fastest, he's not the strongest, he doesn't have the best hands, he doesn't have the most skills. But you wanna know something? Beat me to practice every single night for three years. Okay? Worked his rear end off. Every practice to him is if it was the last practice he was ever going to do football again. And I'm not kidding you. And I know all the boys come out and they give their heart and soul to practice and everything. But they get recognized for their skill and everything. And other, co other coaches will never recognize Carlo for what he does and how he does it. Okay? I do. Which is why Carlo started every single game at nose tackle for me since I started. Because you see, just I, you know, these these are these are reasons that I'm here, you know, because I root for these kids. I root for every single one of them. But it's these guys here that that don't get all that scoreboard attention. Don't get all that pat on the back. And if any of you didn't pay attention, he was a captain in the national championship game. You know why? Because he deserved it. Woo! And I want him to understand that hard work, and dedication, and commitment does pay off. Okay? And it pays off. Maybe, you know, I'm sure he wants to be a running back. I'm sure he wants to be a quarterback. I'm sure he wants to be a safety. I'm sure he wants... It didn't work out that way. But I made sure I found a position that he would excel at, and he did, because I didn't want him to fail. Okay? And he didn't fail. And he better continue on in football in high school, because he can do it. And the hard work will pay off for him. And I'm proud to have coached him. And I'm glad he's going on to high school. Rides his bike down. Uh, we had a couple streets closed off, and then here he is riding his bike down by me, waving, you know, smiling. Loves life, man. Just loves life. And uh, Carlo Beaver, thank you. And he had the pleasure of riding with me two years on a plane. <laughs> it just happened to work out that way. <laughs> All right. Crazy Eyes McGee. All right. And everybody's like, why do you call him Crazy Eyes McGee? Well, here, I'll tell you why he's Crazy Eyes McGee. We would do drills, and like if you would see him, his eyes would be like popping out of his head. Because, I don't know why. <laughs> Strenuous on him, or what? But he had crazy eyes, and that's where we got it. Crazy eyes, McGee. And Michael's first year for us. Center, Eline. A man of very few words, like sound. Okay. Michael was our center. Played 
some D-line last year. This year he got the pressure taken off of him. He didn't have to play center all the time. Ah, shucks. Michael wanted to play defense. And we wanted to make sure we got him on the D-line. And he did a great job. Another one that uh, was a ride home partner or a pickup partner to practice, and I got the fantasy football school. <laughs> and uh, another one that committed himself. His parents, great people. Glad he's been part of the program. And if you didn't know, his two sisters went through the whole program here and played football for the Lion Bears. So they're junior midget here. And he had tough shoes to fill. Because they were good. He's good too. Michael His, young, his uncle, and his uncle went with me my first time ever, myself and my team going to nationals, his uncle was my running back. And I had the, I got the fortunate to get him, and we were able to finish and get a national championship. He gets to go home to his uncle, like this. And when I got Smitty, one coach said to me, Coach, you're going to love him. He's Unbelievable, a dominant player. And I was like, okay, I always hear the same story. You know, you gotta prove it to me. Now, make no mistake, Smitty proved it to us, okay? Started out, believe me, if you look at him now, you'd, you'd, you'd laugh. He was a little roly poly in 2015. He was, he was. Last year, trimmed out, this year looks great. Looks great. And you know what? Out of all his family members that play football, and I've watched them all play, I think he's going to be the best. He's got the heart, the soul, and the attitude. And he's going to be a heck of a football player, and I'm glad that I was able to coach him. Jesse Smith. Yeah. got another year of eligibility here. Yes, he does. Yeah. Is he, even? Yeah. he sure does. See you next Saturday. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> the tankster. Okay. I had the pleasure of getting this young man back. 2015, the tanker. This is the first year the tanker didn't have to worry about losing weight, which I'm happy because life's been a struggle for him for two years here. But if you ever saw a tank run with a football, you know why we call him the tank. And then if you ever see him on a football field at D line, D end, linebacker, wherever you have him at, and then he hits, you know why we call him the tank. All right? Tank's an eighth grader, another huge, I'm going to miss him, and if you saw his uh, speech on the stage in Florida, I think he giggled more than he was able to talk, <laughs> which, is, which is awesome, because it just shows you how these young men are raised and how they are. They're not, they're not used to jumping on a stage and grabbing a mic and acting like a bunch of knuckleheads. Very humble young man, He's done a lot of things for us, he dedicated himself to us, played through a ton of injuries, folks. He played that championship game with a very bad ankle. He played a lot of his season last year hurt, a lot of this season hurt, and I'm proud of him because he could have taken the easy way out and thought he was in the NFL and sat and watched, and he didn't. And I'm proud of him, and I'm very proud of his coach. Him. Amaje Williams. Gussie. Yeah. 
Jesse. Thank you, Brandon. Well, you should call him the kiss ass. <laughs> oh, you him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a brown noser. Hey, hey. Hey. Let me tell you what, this guy is going to be the best used car salesman. <laughs> All right? He almost sold me his car. <laughs> no, seriously. See that? That's, that's how he came to the football field every night. 2015, it's my first time with him. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing him without a mohawk. He's used to seeing him with the mohawk. I was very disappointed that he met the mohawk this year. But I understand. Eighth grade girls, hair. Right? <laughs> Who's the one to talk with the hair? Right? Okay. <laughs> Gussie is one of these kids that you love. Because, again, he wants to play every single position on the football field. <laughs> He's a kid that studies the game. Though I'm not lying to you. <laughs> Gus brought me a playbook my first year here. Don't be embarrassed. I, it's cool. <laughs> he brought me a playbook. And he says, hey, coach, do you think we can run any plays out of here? <laughs> I take the playbook home and I look it over. And then I have him turn my Madden game on. <laughs> <laughs> See, don't make fun of him because, because you know what? When Gus is done playing football, whatever level it's at, wherever it's at, I know one thing for sure: he will be. He's going to be a coach, okay? Because it's just it's in him. For him, if you actually would have looked over the playbook, there's a lot of thought, a lot put into it, and it takes a lot of thinking and creativity, which you need. And it was awesome. It was a cool playbook. Don't ever be embarrassed of it. That's, I, I wouldn't mention it at all. <laughs> the coolest thing was, though, is he is the best kiss asser on the team. <laughs> and I can tell you what, he almost had me convinced he was the starting quarterback every year. <laughs> Gus played his first year for us. Where'd you play, Gus? Bench? <laughs> All right, he was a middle linebacker, and he was our backup center to Chacon, and then he played our he played tackle and guard pretty much wherever we needed him to. Fullback. Gus wants to be in every position, and it's awesome. And wherever he wants to be, he'll put himself there. We've already talked about where he needs to be for high school. Okay? So, the work you need to do when you do it, he'll be there. Okay? Great young man. Pleasure to coach him. Family's awesome. They, he's done nothing but just abuse me for three years. Abuse you? No, it's just... Awesome, awesome. I'm glad to have coached him. His future's bright. The coach, Gus Osterheim. Yes. Woo! Yes, slap right on through. Gabrielle. 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 G
quiet, shy, but let me tell you what, good feet, good hands, hard hitter, hard hitter. Played fullback for us, tight end, receiver, corner. This past year, plays receiver for the most part, tough year. Getting him to where he's going to be playing in high school. He's going to be playing corner for sure. He's going to be playing receiver. Maybe some running back. There is that there. Comes to practice, smiling, busting my chops, <laughs> having a good time. Technician. We got one left. That's it. We're fine. Okay. I. Came out of 2015. Man of many, many, many words. <laughs> I could probably count on one hand how many words have come out of his mouth in three years. Somebody that uh, I have never seen take a sport so serious in my life. You would never tell it by the way he acts. But, boy, we lose a football game. What a rough afternoon it is when it Okay? You've got, you've got your guys on your team. Marco, the, that it, that at any time something can go, the big play is always there. Then you've got the guy, you got Tank, who's the guy that's running over everybody. And then you got the guy in the backfield, who's that in-betweener. He'll break the big play, he'll run over you, do whatever it takes. Not the biggest, not the fastest, not the strongest, not the most confident. His confidence would get to hear his level is unbelievable. Look how serious he is right now. He's mad at me right now. <laughs> Guys, pay attention. One of the true leaders of the team. Not that vocal leader of the team. He will show you on the field what he's doing and how to do it. And then practice, one of those guys that shows up and acts like it's his last practice. <laughs> because he's out there 100% all the time. I'm gonna miss him, I'm gonna miss all of them. I'm gonna miss him because he loves hugs. <laughs> He dreads the day he met me. Because <laughs> I, I embarrass him all the time. But that's okay. Because he needs it. Because sky's the limit for him. Fantastic AAU basketball player. Okay? And that's it. That's his sports. Academics, everything. And he's got the whole on there. I love it. Jalen Technician White. <laughs> She loves to be in the limelight, too. I don't get it. I don't know, but ask Jesse. The reason I bring her up is because she's the one that's the forgotten one in the background, where she wants to be, trust me. Trust me. She's been my team mom for three years. Believe me, you have no clue the crap I put her through. Not intentionally, of course. And she did a great job. I had, she, like, she forced me to come back this year. I forced her to come back. She didn't want to do it. She wanted to hang it up. But I wouldn't let her. 
for a package deal. Her husband filmed every football game for us for the last three years. season. I wish all my 8th graders nothing but the best in high school, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You boys, at any time, need anything from me, whether it's coaching, on the side, life problems you need to talk about, or you just want to meet up and talk. I want to go to your football games. If you don't play football, whatever you're doing, whether it's liberal arts, whatever, 